elevated my uh, thing from the ground to a table. This is temporary. What I got going on here? Hobby charger, multimeter, screwdriver. Oh yeah, baby. We're going DIY. We're going to strap up. Do uh, 8S2P. Lithium ion. So these are lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, and that's just going to give me way the hell more capacity than what these lead acids are giving me. Uh, by the Trojan spec, these two lead acid batteries give me about 1.3 kilowatts additional power. Usable capacity of lead acid being about 50%. Uh, either way, I'd be surprised if I'm getting a full 1.3 kilowatts out of those. And this, this was working pr pretty much fine. Uh, the high end, when this... See, right now our, our voltage, our percentage is at 87. The voltages are getting a little higher. Uh, this one? Aha, that one. So we're sitting at 27 volts on these, which I believe that's the float voltage. So it'll go up closer to 28 um, <clears throat> when it's fully charged. Um, and I feel like it was just holding these at more like an equalization charge just a little too long. I did have to top up the water once in them. Uh, we had lost a lot of capacity uh, and so I had added water and the capacity came back uh, which was an easy fix but uh, long term this isn't a great solution. You're going to degrade these quickly. Uh, I think they're even going down too low in voltage when this thing finally cuts out. Uh, so to go all lithium iron phosphate will be much better. Anyway what I was getting to, ramble ramble ramble, uh, 1.3 kilowatt hours, roughly, usable capacity. These, uh, off the top of my head, should be closer to 5.2 kilowatt hours, so 80% of that usable capacity. We are more than doubling the expansion of, that is, of what that is. Uh, with my special super secret, not so secret, getting shipping into Central America cost me an additional $225 US to get these in this country. Um, but the purchase price of those in the US shipped was about $1,500 US. So $1,500 US, you're looking at 5.2 kilowatt hours capacity versus had I just bought the expansion battery for this or any other rack battery for a solar system that was lithium iron phosphate, uh, you're looking at two grand or more usually for 2.4, 2.6 kilowatt hours. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm getting almost double for half the price. I'm really excited about it. But at this point, I've got nothing. So let's shut off the camera and get this done. So we're in progress draining uh, these cells. I got my first eight just paralleled up. I got my charger here set. So the, um, the charger, you can set the limit, the high voltage limit of whatever you're hooked up to for when it cuts off for discharging. So what it's doing right now, I don't know if that's going to be able to focus on that, it's set for lithium iron phosphate batteries, one cell, we're discharging at 30 amps. There's a drop in the bucket for this. This is eight, so that'd be 840 amps. <laughs> One 840 amp cell. Uh, this is the current voltage that this thinks these are at. Uh, this reads a little low. They're actually closer to just just barely under three volts a cell right now. When I check it with the meter, uh, we're discharging. So far, we've taken a couple amps out. That's milliamps come out running for four minutes. Oh, I've, I've stopped it a few times to update settings. Um, but it's going to take it down to 2.5 volts, which is all right. So input power, this is what this sees on the lead acid. So it sees them at 26.21 volts. And we're putting three amps into these batteries right now. And so my meter is hooked up. So it sees 26.1 volts versus this thing thinks it's 26.2 volts. 
versus the Pecron itself thinks it's 26.3 volts. Yay. Small update the next day uh, in the morning. Um, so of course the battery is just about dead. So these have a little more power in them than what it thinks. What I've done is my charger is now using this 12 volt battery from my generator which is kaputs and so I just wired it to the cigarette lighter and then that's going into the 12 volt DC input so that's giving just a little over 40 watts worth of charge input so this thing knows about it I guess that's a little bit better um, but the most I'm pulling is about 70 watts is it going to focus there we go so we're pulling 30 amps or 2.56 volts so it's going to pull it down to 2.5 which is oh, stupid buttons on the phone let's try this again <coughs> focus focus there we go so we're pulling 30 amps we're down to 2.55 volts on the cells. These eight strapped up in parallel. Little toaster wires there, 14 gauge running hard. So when that hits 2.5, these are actually at about uh, three. Yes, yeah, so we're still reading 3.1. But when this charger finally kicks out, it's thought to be 2.5 volts. Then I'll unstrap these and do them individually, one at a time, at less than 30 amps to get it close to the actual voltage I want it at. And um, that should work. So lead acids, these ones are just normal in the system. I'm not feeding them power directly like I was before charging the system. Instead, I'm going through the front because realistically, I'm never going to pull more than 100 watts this way because of the voltage even though this is a thousand watt charger max is at 30 amps but uh, yeah we'll see what happens so the dis charger is currently discharging it's doing regenerative discharge I'm pulling 20 amps we're at 6.14 volts we strapped up the second pack in a 2s 4p or no yes so I got, where's my hand? I got the four in parallel and the four in parallel and then I series them together. So we're basically a, a 2S battery. 2S 4P, uh, just I wanted to be able to run the voltage a little higher and not draw 30 amps through these thin little wires. Um, they actually started getting wrecked from the heat. This one's yeah, you can see like it burnt a little bit. So I've slipped them off. So these ones are all resting about 3.7 volts right now. And these ones I'll get down to almost the same. So it's late, end of the second day. Uh, dark out, very dark out. And so my solar is providing nothing. And my 12 volt auxiliary in is providing 72 watts of charge. And so that, of course, is coming from the crap generator battery, which is being fed by the charger. <coughs> Let's get that to focus. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. So. <coughs> We're pushing 7.7 .7 amps into that battery. It's at 13.24 volts right now. That's not entirely accurate, but it is close. Come on, focus. Low light levels. So I'm pulling 20 amps. We're down to 5.65 volts. That's on a two cell, four parallel setup. So I've got block four in parallel 
another block of four in parallel, and then those are series for two cells. These are the first ones I scrapped up all parallel and brought down. Uh, and they, they rested at about 3.2 3 volts after I discharged them a whole bunch. Um, these ones, when I did them, I scrapped them up like that. And I took them off about an hour ago, and they're all reading about 2, 2.74, 2.75 volts each. So that's good. Alright, next morning update. Um, sun is back out. We're charging. But I had eight cells, all perfectly balanced. So I strapped them up in series and connected them externally. Updated the internal menu to account for the capacity of this, which is uh, 1920 watts, and the capacity of a single one of these banks, which are 2688 watts. And so I'm still balancing uh, just a couple more cells. Um, so I got three to go to get balanced, and then I'll finish strapping them here. And then all parallel, positive to positive. Uh, as long as this doesn't take too, too much longer, uh, the voltages between the balanced pack and the one that is slightly charging now won't be that different. And so I can just pigtail it on there and um, the charged batteries will just start pushing into the discharged batteries. Again, as long as they're relatively close, it won't be too many amps going across. Uh, if this takes quite a bit longer and this gets up quite a bit uh, higher in voltage, uh, I'll just wait till tomorrow morning when it's discharged down again. Or what I could do actually is just use my charger and uh, yeah, a thousand watts charge. That's what this thing can do. Uh, but that would be doing a thousand into this huge battery, and I could do up to a thousand into uh, the smaller battery and I'd actually be stealing power from these batteries to those batteries so I could in theory charge this second pack faster using my hobby charger to get them to about the same voltage and then tie them together. Alright, there it is folks. About 11 o'clock. Nice and sunny out. Charging at our full solar capacity, just over a kilowatt. <laughs> Go away, mosquito. Um, we're at 22%, which this thing thinks is 26.5 volts. It's pretty nice. So, same solid, solid copper uh, wires that I was using in the lead acid. Uh, they're slightly warm, but this is pushing the maximum current it ever would into these batteries. So the weakest part of this whole thing, weakest part of this whole thing is me tapping buttons on the phone. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the permanent marker is basically dry erase. I'd love to figure out a better way to put some numbers on these. Um, EVTV usually has, you can get a sticker sheet, but I thought I don't need a sticker sheet, I'll just use permanent marker. Well, I don't know if it's just this plastic or if it's that this permanent marker is a real piece of junk, but that's no good. Second weakest, and more importantly, is just my uh, my battery handles here. Those aren't strong enough. No, not battery handles. Just my paralleling jumper wires. Uh, big enough wire, but I really need to get some um, uh, ring terminals and properly crimp those on there. Maybe even, no, I wouldn't solder. I'm not a believer in solder. Uh, just crimp some nice rings on there and, and get those so I can have a couple here and one here. Anyway, um, and I did as I said, I used my, my charger and I just hooked it up as battery input and charged this one up and then I brought them both to about the same voltage. Um, not too hard because the voltage is so close uh, through the whole middle of the charge. Um, but these will happily balance themselves together. Uh, I believe the secondary pack was even a little bit more charged than the ones 
hooked up already, but uh, there was no sparking. These didn't warm up at all when I connected them together. Um, so we're just happily charging. Uh, total of uh, 7,296 watts I have going on here now. So that's um, just short of what they provide when you buy two extra external um, battery packs. Uh, of course, I'm missing a lot of features. I don't have solar charge inputs directly to these. I don't have DC output directly from these. I don't have a fancy cable that I can plug and unplug. Uh, this is very much a permanent stay in one spot, don't move around, non-portable solution. But I am powering an entire house with it. So I'm not going to be moving it around. Um, if I get about three really sunny days in a row, I think we'll hit 100% under our normal use conditions uh, with sunny days. Uh, but that's, that'll be the next thing is to get this up to 100% uh, and have it get depleted so that the, uh, the watt counter or the amp counter or whatever you want to call it in this thing uh, gets a little bit better self-calibrated to know what the capacity is versus the percentage. Uh, I did update the, the watt value of the battery, the capacity, uh, in the hidden menu. Um, there's nothing in these instruction manuals about the hidden menu in these, but if you go onto the Pecron website and you go to the EB3000, which is the expansion battery for these, uh, download its manual. It has the detailed instructions in there with all the details about what all the menu items are. Uh, except for there's one additional page. Page 8 is uh, the high cut voltage. And so my low cut voltage is the stock 22 volts and the high cut voltage is the stock 27.8 volts. Um, I'll wait and see when this thing actually hits 100%. Uh, I'll measure with my trusty blue point what the voltages are actually on these and I'll monitor it as it gets closer. Make sure we're not going over voltage on any of these cells, but realistically at full voltage, these are not going to be over 3.5 volts uh, per cell, um, but they can go up to 3.65 volts uh, and they can go as low as 2.5 volts on the, uh, the spec sheets. Um, they won't be going near that low and they won't be going that high. So. I expect um, no problems out of this. Um, cell drift and all that shit they try and tell you about, it's not real. Lithium iron phosphate batteries just stay at what they're at. If there's nothing attached to them, they don't drift in voltage. And as you charge them and discharge them, their capacity is, is really quite stable. So I'll be monitoring this for the next little while, just make sure I don't have any bad cells or anything. But. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. It looks like everything is going to be great.